Okay, I think we can uh, we can get started. My name's Ian Dolphin. I'm executive director of the uh, the Apario Foundation. Uh, Apario came into being a couple of years ago, almost as a, a merger of JSIG and Sakai. Uh, its role is to support and sustain software to further the academic mission. Um, today, Apario and its partner organization, ASAP in France, represent a network of 180 higher education institutions globally. We've got an increasing number of projects in our incubation program. Um, this webinar series is going to give you the opportunity to get to know some of those projects. Today, it gives me real pleasure to introduce two speakers on uPortal. Uh, and before I do that, it's worthwhile noting that uPortal was one of the first uh, open source in higher ed products, began almost 15 years ago. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jim Helwig, uh, Chair of the U Portal Steering Group from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and Drew Wills from Unicon. They're going to be speaking about U Portal. A uh, bit of housekeeping. Uh, please keep your microphone muted. Uh, it will help uh, during the course of the, the webinar. And if you've got a question to post, feel free to post that in the chat window at any time. We hope we can deal with those uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, but without further ado, over to you, Jim, and thank you. Thank you, Ian. Again, I'm Jim Helwig from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I've been serving as the chair of the U-Portal Steering Committee for several years now. And uh, Drew Wills, who will be participating as well, uh, has been a committer on the U-Portal project for many, many years, and he also serves on the U-Portal Steering Committee. This, uh, today we should be able to have a little something for everybody. For those of you that are new to uPortal, we'll give you a brief overview of what makes our platform unique. We're then going to focus on the features of the latest version of uPortal that just had a patch release, uh, yesterday. And we'll cover the various strategies that you can use for getting content into the portal and demonstrate some of those features in action. And finally, we'll take a look at some of the future enhancements that we hope to see uh, in the future in uPortal. So a little bit about uPortal. Our platform has been around for over a decade, and it came out of a need to have a very flexible and powerful integration platform that met the needs of higher education. And we felt that joining together as higher education institutions and organizations and commercial partners, we could create a platform that would solve our needs. It's been under continuous development with regular releases since 2000 and is used by many uh, institutions uh, across the world. And just to give you a little bit of a flavor of the variety of ways that uPortal can uh, be configured and skinned, I just included just a few of the slide shots of um, other institutions that we have deployed. And not only do we have the desktop version, but, you know, there are many flavors of uh, uPortal that are available on the uh, mobile devices as well. So uPortal is everything that you'd actually want in a full-size, uh, fully-featured product. But also, it's everything you'd want in an open source product. And it's important to note that um, we do remain 100% free and open source. Every single version of uPortal, every feature of the product is available for download for anybody. And again, I think the real feature set that of uPortal that meets our higher ed needs is that we, we can deliver this individually tailored and personalized content in a way that many other um, uh, platforms are not able to do. From the get-go, we've recognized that at our institutions, we have many different types of people with many different types of roles, and we want to be able to tailor uh, the presentation based upon those roles. We have many different types of groups on our campuses. 
many uh, different types of populations. And we can, Yuka portal can be con configured to consume many different types of uh, uh, data sources to get at those affiliations, to get at those user attributes and deliver a tailored experience that really it gets to you as a person. Not only are we able to uh, tailor that experience for individuals, we're able to tailor that experience based upon uh, the devices or the networks that you're uh, connecting to the portal with. And I think one of the other features that I really want to highlight of uPortal is that it's not just a collection of source code that's available for you to download and uh, and take and install. It's really a community that you are, after you do download a product, the product, you can engage with the community and really get the benefits of being part of this greater open source community. There are many different ways that you can engage. We have active mailing lists where as a, uh, an institution that just wants to make use of this product, you can engage in the um, user mailing list. If you are a someone that wants to get a little bit more into developing and extending the product, uh, you can engage with the developer mailing, mailing lists. We have an IRC channel that remains active with a lot of core developers on it. And anyone is free to join, and you can engage with those uh, folks that are actually doing the a lot of the core development of the product. We also have opportunities for people to engage face-to-face. -face. Annually at the Aperio conference, we have a good turnout of uPortal uh, of the uPortal community, and we also have uh, a good turnout at the annual camp. And for those of you that are not familiar with that venue, it's a way that uh, we can get together in more of an ad hoc or informal manner and really tailor the uh, few days of activities to meet the needs of whoever attends. We've, it's been a great way that we've been able to uh, discuss possible future enhancements to the portal and align and start to move forward on those future enhancements. If you are interested in, in learning more, we will uh, also periodically have um, uPortal community calls that are held online uh, where you can engage with folks in the community as well. But I'd like to turn it over to Drew Wills, who will talk more about the features of uPortal 4.1 specifically. All right, can you guys hear me now? All right, splendid. Uh, hey, yeah, this is Drew Wills. Thanks, Jim. Uh, I will uh, jump in here talking about the latest version of uPortal, which is uPortal 4.1. Uh, we actually, as Jim mentioned, had a, a fresh, a brand new uh, patch release of uPortal 4.1, which is version 4.1.2, and that was released yesterday, finalized yesterday. All right, excellent. So uh, this next section uh, covers some of the latest and greatest, some of the most important developments with uPortal 4.1. Uh, after that, I've got a section on content strategies, uh, which we will also cover before the demos. But uh, kicking off with uPortal 4.1, uh, here are, what is it, seven uh, sort of key features in uPortal 4.1. I tried to really highlight the most important things to talk about. uPortal 4.1 is a really big release. There's a lot going on there, uh, you know, plenty of, um, you know, bug fixes and performance improvements and, and less sort of sexy things as well as the things on this slide. But uh, we'll talk about Responder. We'll talk about Regions which is sort of a feature of Responder. We'll talk about the marketplace, which is a new way to find content in the portal. We're gonna talk about multi-tenancy, which is a, a new concept that we added to, to uPortal, the ability for, uh, for you to offer a sort of a portal in a portal experience. We're gonna talk about uh, dynamic skins. We're, um, 
skinning the portal in, in new and interesting ways. We're going to talk about uh, the favorites subsystem within uPortal and the favorites portlet, as well as the enhancements that have been made to search, to the search widget in the portal. So kicking off with Responder, this is really the marquee uh, new feature in uPortal for one. It's sort of the reason that we that we tag this release for one, the thing that really made for one. The the user experience, the UI, I should say, for uPortal has been completely rebooted uh, in the form of Responder. uPortal, for those who know, uses uses things called themes uh, to you know, organize or implement a user interface. Responder is a brand new theme. It didn't exist at all before 4.1. It's completely new and updated with brand new versions of JavaScript and CSS libraries and so forth, things that make up a modern a modern user experience. But even more important than that, this uh, this theme is really built on top of and organized around uh, Bootstrap 3. So it implements responsive design for the portal, which uh, a year and a half ago at the conference in 2013, that uh, emerged as the key desire, sort of the key new feature that everybody wanted in their U portal. And, uh, you know, the community of, of developers listened to that. We put our heads together. And uh, about a year later, we had uPortal 4.1 with Responder and Responsive Design based on Bootstrap 3. Uh, and the management of uh, the user interface, the uh, styles, uh, CSS rules are now defined in less, less CSS. So I think I've got, yep, I've got some screenshots here. Uh, this slide sort of il illustrates in, in one go uh, responder being responsive and uh, reacting to or displaying differently on different classes of devices. I should say displaying appropriately, displaying in attractive ways on different classes of devices. You're also going to see more of this in a little bit when we get to the demos. All right, uh, the next item on the list for uPortal 4.1 was this notion of regions. And actually, as I kind of mentioned, regions is really a feature of Responder. Uh, Responder uh, with the regions feature really looks at the portal page as a, um, as a series of buckets or a, a series of spaces that make up uh, the page. And regions allows you to place content, portal content in the form of portlets into those areas on the page uh, reasonably elegantly to build up the page any way you want. And you're going to see uh, lots of examples of that. This strategy around regions actually allows us to keep the responder theme a, a lot more simple, slimmer, more elegant, easier to maintain going forward. The uh, the responder theme is, is quite a bit slimmer than its than the uh, than its ancestor universality the theme that uh, went before it. So here's a graphic that kind of illustrates. It's a very big graphic, and you can see it in the in the in the wiki for you portal uh, in its complete form. But this graphic uh, or the excerpt from the graphic kind of highlights how the page is broken down into different sections or areas or regions. Uh, and this is how Responder works. There are uh, places on the page like header top, header left, header right, and there's sidebar left and sidebar right. There's the main content area and so forth. With Responder, you're able to put portal content into these areas. And if you do, these areas become a part of your portal page and you'll view them appropriately but any regions that you leave empty uh, disappear completely from the DOM. So you just take advantage of what you want and you leave alone the things you don't need. Uh, next up on our list, Marketplace. Marketplace is uh, both a, uh, a portlet, it's implemented as a portlet as well as sort of a feature of the portal. It's a new way for users to find content in the portal. And we're, we're going to see some screenshots of this, and we're actually also going to see this in the demos coming up. 
Uh, but the, the marketplace essentially gives users sort of an app store, uh, you know, highly visual experience for finding content, for finding portlets in the portal. Uh, and it's a it's an alternative to the personalization gallery, which is uh, the way that that um, users personalize the portal in in U Portal four zero and in and in U Portal three. Uh, the marketplace is driven by sort of more images and more metadata than previous personalization interfaces. So you can look at screenshots, you can look at uh, ratings and reviews, you can look at related portlets and featured portlets and so forth. And here is a, a screen capture of the sort of main or default screen, uh, the list view screen in the marketplace. You can see, uh, for those of you familiar with the personalization gallery, you can see that it takes up a lot more screen real estate. Uh, you know, that's okay, it gives you uh, uh, you know, a highly visual app store sort of experience for finding content. Uh, this is, as I say, the list view screen. It lists portlets and you can filter this list by category or alphabetically or by different means. And then when you find a, uh, a piece of content, a portlet in this list that, you, that you're interested in, that you want to learn more about, you can go into a detail screen and see uh, ratings and reviews, you can see screenshots and so forth. You can see other portlets in the same category. You can read uh, a long description of, of the portlet. All right, uh, next topic, multi-tenancy. This is uh, the community of developers sort of kicked around for a while, but uh, really took shape in uPortal 4.1. Uh, we have this notion of uh, of a tenant in the portal, and a tenant is uh, can be, you know, either a campus, like a dental school, or a law school, or some department that has a lot of um, uh, independence and operates, you know, sort of very much on its own independently. Uh, a, a tenant in the portal can have uh, its own logo, skin, data, content. Can have a number of assets in the portal that are unique to it. And those assets can be managed by, uh, you know, by delegated tenant administrators through, um, you know, attractive and intuitive UIs. So here, uh, here are some screen captures of the tenant manager portlet. You can access the tenant manager from the regular portal administration tools. You can see that circle on the left. Uh, the tenant manager portlet is pretty simple and straightforward. It lists the tenants that are already in the portal and it gives you the opportunity to define a new one. It doesn't take very much uh, to define a tenant, but uh, you know you give the tenant a name uh, and specify uh, you know your first tenant administrator, the first administrator for the the tenant. And you also have to kind of define how, you will identify users in the portal as belonging to the tenancy, and that's why you've got the org value at the bottom, if you can see that in the, the bottom right screenshot. There are lots of different ways to do that. You can do that based on, on URL or user attribute, or, or there are different strategies for doing that, but there has to be a way to identify which users are associated with the tenancy in the portal. And then this screen sort of illustrates how a tenant manager, someone who is not a global portal administrator, might manage the assets of the tenancy. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that, that uh, the by the logo, uh, you have to imagine my mouse sort of hovering over. Here, I'll put a red dot there. Imagine my mouse sort of hovering over the logo. Uh, if you have the authority to change the logo, if you're a tenant manager, you would get this sort of hover chrome, this, this hover config option. You could click on it, and that would allow you to go into the WYSIWYG editor and change, uh, change the logo just for your tenancy. And then on the left-hand side, you can see uh, there's a portlet with config mode that's a part of the tenancy that the tenant manager can, can access the con configure option and change the, uh, you know, parameters, publishing parameters of that portlet. And then lastly, uh, there is this notion of dyna dynamic skins. Uh, tenants are allowed to 
to have their own sort of brand, their own colors, their own skin in the portal. So each tenancy typically, depending on how you set it up, but typically uh, each tenancy has its own skin defined and a tenant administrator can access the skin controls for uh, for that tenant skin. And using a uh, an HTML color picker, the tenant manager can specify a primary color, um, you know, uh, red, green, blue value, uh, and and ask the server to recompile the skin for that tenancy. And poof, uh, the portal, uh, at least for tenants in that tenancy, uh, all of a sudden the portal has now the correct colors to match uh, the logo for the tenancy and so forth. All right, continuing in our list of important new features in ePortal 4.1, next we have favorites. Users now have the ability to mark portlets in the portal uh, as favorites, things that they use a lot or, or, or particularly like or, or, or want to find again later. Uh, the option to add something to your favorites is present in the, in the portlet chrome of every portlet. And when you access the favorites portlet, you can see the things that you've designated as favorites. You can actually also manage those favorites. You can unfavorite something, something from there. But uh, this system of favorites and the favorites portlet allow users to manage a collection of, of the portlets they use most or the ones they want to find again. Lastly, uh, search as you type. Uh, we have done a number of search enhancements for uPortal 4.1. Uh, users using the search widget at the top right, or at least typically it's, it's uh, installed in the top right of the portal. Users using the search widget can put in their terms, and as soon as they uh, start to type enough characters, search results start to appear with both a title and a short description underneath, and users can select them directly without entering the search form uh, so they can very quickly find the things that they're interested in. All right, uh, that is a quick tour of highlights of ePortal 4.1. Now we're moving on to some uh, information about content strategies, getting content into the portal. And this is actually orders. This has been a, a big move, a big shift within the developer community. The, in, in ancient times, uh, in the earliest days of ePortal, there really was sort of one way, uh, primarily one way to get new content in the portal. And that was this last bullet point, essentially, well, we called them channels back then, but uh, Java development, you know, the content strategy of developing, developing uh, content widgets in Java for the portal was the sort of primary and original strategy. But in the last, as I say, the last year and a half or so, we've really been focusing on building out a spectrum of strategies, uh, a range of strategies, because it's important that not everything you put in the portal is, is a software development project. Uh, the, the strategies I'm going to highlight right now are, are uh, quite a bit simpler, are, are rapid uh, to implement, and several of them don't require uh, very much technical knowledge at all. The first of these is the app launcher, and this is a terrific tool. When I get to the demos, we're gonna see a lot of these. Uh, this, more I think than anything else on the list, allows you to build out a comprehensive uh, portal, and by that I mean allows you to give a presence to all the systems and services in your campus uh, to give them a presence in the portal extremely rapidly. This is about about a 10 minute task, if that. Uh, so several of these can be implemented in your portal, you know, within an hour, uh, dozens in a day. Uh, it's very simple. You go through a quick wizard uh, to register the portlet, and at the end of that, you get a screen like you see on the left that has, uh, you know, six or seven inputs. Only about three of them are required. You quickly give the thing, you know, a title and, and a link URL. You can upload an image. 
you can actually specify, if you want to, a link title, uh, so hover text and a subtitle. Uh, but when you configure it properly, you end up with something like what you see on the right, a little portlet, a widget that has a logo, a title, optionally a subtitle, and allows the user uh, allows the user to find, uh, you know, the service or the application in the portal very easily uh, and, and go to it, essentially. The whole thing is, is a hyperlink to sort of launch into the other application. That's why it's, why it's called the App Launcher. And when you do it, when you go into the other application, it might look like, look like this. Uh, when you publish an App Launcher, one of the, one of the options that you have as the administrator of an app launcher is a choice whether to display, display the app launcher, sorry, whether to display the application itself in detached window state like this. So uh, in the portal itself, you can see that in this screen capture, the portal has been reduced to, I think it's a 55 pixel high bar at the top of the page. It tells you you're still signed into the portal. It has uh, a home icon in the top left, so you can return to the portal. Uh, and actually, you can put um, other content in this bar if you want to. You could you could put like a, you know a notification icon portlet that still tells you how many notifications you have, or an email icon portlet that tells you how many emails you have, or or whatever is important to you. You can put it in this bar. But uh, one of the options you have with the app launcher portlet is to display the things you launch in a view such as this. And this is called detached window state. It's a feature of uPortal. The other option is just to display those things in a new, win new window. It's, uh, it's, um, you know, it's an either or choice. You just pick which display strategy you want and you're good to go. So next on the list of strategies uh, on our spectrum of strategies for content is the simple CMS portlet. And this one, unlike the app launcher, this one's actually been around for a while, but it is improving uh, by degrees. Uh, recently, not that recently, but in the last few quarters, it uh, gained the ability to embed images directly by uh, uploading uh, images from, you, from your own desk uh, to the portal server. But it's a rich text editor. Uh, those with access, access to configuration of the portlet can access the rich text editor and uh, add, create, update the content uh, for the portlet. When you're done, you just hit save and, and that's it. You've created a piece of content in the portal. This is another one that is uh, accessible to non-technical administrators and another one that allows you to set up a lot of content quickly. So this next one uh, is one uh, I, I particularly like. I use this a lot. It's called the Simple JSP Portlet. And uh, it allows you to develop, essentially, to build out a, uh, a brand new portlet that can be somewhat sophisticated. It has access to, to things like the user's uh, group affiliations, the user's attributes, and so forth, can potentially have access to other configuration information or even spring beans in the in the context. Uh, but it allows you to build out a, a quick portlet based on uh, uh, putting together, based on writing uh, a single JSP file. And then when you publish the portlet, you just specify which JSP uh, you're using. Uh, this is, uh, I think this strategy is fantastic. It, it's, I, I count it among the the very quick, quick strategies, but it's not, um, it's unlike the two previous, it's not one that a non-technical user can really implement it. It takes some knowledge of how, of Java and how uh, JSPs work in order to be successful with this strategy, but it's still, uh, a, you know, a key strategy for the portal as a whole. Another one is uh, the SQL query portlet. This one is not uh, terribly new either, but it has seen some updates in terms of its, uh, you know, visual appeal, uh, how it displays. Uh, someone with knowledge of, of how to write an SQL query can set up a portlet quickly that performs a query against any uh, data source that you can configure in the portal. 
uh, and you can quickly show a table of results. Uh, you know, this example here shows, uh, you know, balance in, in campus bucks uh, within the, in the portal system. Uh, so there are a number of, of really cool uh, quick things that you can add with an SQL query portlet. Uh, next one on our list is not is not new by any stretch either. It's sort of the original uh, Aperio portlet web proxy, although there is a, a new version that is vastly more modern and simpler. Uh, web proxy allows you to incorporate content from from other systems directly to essentially to scrape HTML content from other systems and display it as a part of the portal page. Uh, it is particularly attractive and useful for schools, and there are a fair number of these uh, schools that run uPortal, but primarily have their uh, development skills uh, in, in something other than Java, in something other than the Java platform. So .NET schools or LAMP stack schools uh, get a lot of mileage out of the web proxy portlet. All right, uh, continuing down our sort of spectrum of portal content strategies, the next item is uh, Aperio portlets. And these are Java portlets that we have uh, developed in the community and that we maintain in the community. They are, many of them are, are quite mature. Uh, every year we see a few new ones uh, show up. So there's sort of a, a range of possibilities there, but, um, Actually, the, it's not that the other things I just showed you are not Aperio portlets. They are. They absolutely are. But uh, this item on the list is really focused on uh, the sort of richer, more specific uh, Aperio portlet integrations that are available, things like announcements, uh, the email integration, the calendar integration, the notifications portlet in Aperio. Uh, these are great because... A lot have a lot of work on these uh, in these domains has already been done, and there are a lot of schools already running these portlets uh, successfully and and being effective with these portlets. So, when you go to uh, adopt one of these portlets, you can you know sort of uh, stand on the shoulders of giants. You can sort of pick up where the project is, uh, and that's terrific. I. Um, encourage uh, every uh, uPortal school that I work with to focus heavily on the Aperio portlets. I, uh, I say to think of it as either a buffet or possibly a potluck. A potluck might be a little better because uh, the whole, whole paradigm works a little better if you, if you just sort of plan up front to bring something to the table. Uh, you'll find that you can be more successful with it, but uh, on this slide, you can see there's sort of a screen capture of the homepage of the uh, Aperio Portlets wiki space. Uh, and this isn't even the complete thing. There are, are, you can see that there are dozens, you know, several dozen Aperio Portlet projects uh, already in existence, more every year. And each of these projects has at least one portlet in it. Some of them have several portlets in it, in them, sorry. Uh, like, for example, the, uh, the HRS dashboard portlet, which is listed here, portlet project, which is listed here, has close to 10, I think, individual portlets in it. Uh, a good number of these have more than one portlet in them. Okay, and lastly, you know, to complete our spectrum, uh, Java portlet development. Uh, I said up front that uh, in the beginning, uh, in the earliest days of uPortal, Java development was really the only strategy, only available strategy for adding content to your portal. Uh, and the real emphasis, the real point of this section is that, uh, the, is that this strategy is no longer, is far from the only strategy available to you for getting content in the portlet. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would say this strategy is somewhat becoming a strategy of last resort, uh, which is a little mi misleading because this is something I do all the time and something, uh, you know, I enjoy doing. Those of us who work with uPortal at Unicon, we enjoy doing this, but we want to, we 
tools. We want to use this tool in our toolbox at the right times and on the right things. It's important that everything that we do in a portal is not uh, a development project, uh, you know, with a uh, an issue tracker and timelines and so forth, because uh, that that approach to getting content in the portal is expensive. So we want to focus on focus these energies on the things where it counts the most. And uh, for things that are, are um, you know, announcements, which is already supported by an existing Aperio portlet or uh, simply linking out to another system, giving the system a presence in the portal, which can be done very quickly in the app launcher, we want to do those things. We want to do the easy things where we can focus our development efforts on, in the areas where they have the biggest impact. Uh, and lastly, if this is something that you do in your portal, uh, I want to encourage you uh, emphatically to, to do it together with us, to collaborate with Aperio, uh, with, um, you know, those of us at UConn, at Unicon, uh, collaborate with other schools who participate heavily uh, in this space, uh, like University of Manchester, like Oakland University, uh, so that we can, we can do it better together. All right. And that brings me to the demo portion. So I have to get the screen share going again. Bear with me here. While Drew is getting that set up, I'll just uh, remind folks that if you do have any questions uh, while we're going on, go ahead and um, add those in the chat room. So uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, here I am sharing my desktop. I trust that you can see this. If you can't, uh, someone speak up. But uh, here I am. I'm going to start here at uh, a deployment that we call the uPortal Showcase. This is a Unicon um, uPortal deployment that we use for demos commonly. Uh, this uh, this showcase has a CAS instance integrated with our directory here at Unicon. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as myself. Uh, and here, now that I've logged in, I have uh, some content. I the, the purpose of visiting this portal primarily is to show you Responder live then in a screenshot, this is the, the default responder. We're going to look at another version uh, of responder. But you can see out of here is what responder looks like. And, and now I'm going to show you the responsiveness. Here, this is what we mean by responsive design. Uh, I have a very large viewport right now essentially a desktop view. It's on my laptop, but I'm essentially seeing this sort of full or large viewpoint or viewport view of the portal. But as I scale down the width of my browser, uh, Responder and Bootstrap are smart enough to know that uh, at a certain point, at a certain width, it doesn't really make sense to show portlets in uh, columns. So let me get down here closer to the size phone of a smartphone. And now you can see a number of things. First of all, that the, the items in the header have been stacked. Uh, the, uh, you know, the search bar has become full width instead of, you know, becoming minuscule as it would have. It, it now spreads the full width of the, um, of the header up there. The logo is still there. The uh, greeting has been put on the very top. The tabs actually, something special has happened with the tabs. They've disappeared entirely. And I've got a menu here that I can click on to access the tabs but otherwise it's hidden. Uh, the columns uh, of portlets that were present in the, in the larger viewport, viewport are gone. It's down column. All of the portlets are arranged in a single, you know, stacked column. So depending on the kind of device you use to access the portal, you may get uh, anywhere, you may get 
think matches anywhere along that sort of spectrum that you can see evolving as I as, as I grow and shrink uh, the browser's viewport. And the intent again is to give you a good experience in the portal, uh, no matter what type of device you're using to access it. And it's sort of the central, uh, most important point of Responder. Uh, all right, so we've done that. Now I want to show you something completely different. Here's another demo portal that we have uh, running live on a server at Unicon. Uh, the URL is appsdemo1.unicon.net, but um, we call it ULaunch. This is something that uh, we put some, some work into ahead of the Educause conference, actually. We wanted to, to highlight, we really wanted to highlight some of the newer features uh, of you, both in uPortal itself and in the content strategies uh, that I just talked about. So we sort of built a portal around them. We uh, de-emphasized uh, all the things that you see right out of the box here. These, you know, these things are still good. It's a, it's a great portal, but we really wanted to focus on uh, some of the latest and greatest stuff and, and really build a, a new portal experience around it. So that's what we did here. And that's in the U launch. So uh, you can, you know, you can see that on this page, we've got a grid, you know, we've got a, just a ton of these app launcher portlets and, and we call this the, the home tab. And I'll go ahead and click on one of these things. And you can see that, you know, by launching the Sakai app launcher, I go to a page about Sakai uh, and, but I'm still in the portal. This is that detached window state that I talked about. So I, it still tells me, you know, who them and gives me this home button to, to go back to the regular portal experience. Uh, but I can bring a lot of services and applications into the portal very quickly with this, with this strategy. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And I'm going to sign in as the student demo user. Because you get more features when you sign in. So now I have that. It, it tells me I'm signed in as student student, ubiquitous in uPortal. UPortal. It's enrolled in every uPortal adopting institution as, as far as I'm aware. But uh, now that I'm logged, in. I get my own notifications. This is a, a feature in uPortal 4.1, although this is full of uh, demo. I still have the home tab. I still have access to the exact same uh, app launch report, report that you saw in the anonymous view, but uh, I now also have access to, uh, you know, the search. So I can have... Um, you know, content come up that I have access to using the search. I can uh, access, oh, and most importantly, I can access the marketplace. So I'm going to click in to that, and I'll see the sort of App Store experience. Uh, I've got two pages of content. This happens to be the exact same things you see on the home page, but I can access information about those items. I can see a list of featured content in the portal. I can browse by uh, category. I guess I've only got one category up here, browsable. But uh, I can also go into, whoops, that's actually the wrong thing. That takes me to the, let me, I'll go into the detail screen of one of the, um, uh, of one of these things in the marketplace and I can see screenshots uh, or logos. I can see ratings. I can see related portlets. Yeah, you know, experience is very metadata driven. Uh, the more metadata you put in there, the better the experience is. Uh, there are some features integrated with the uh, features of the marketplace that are integrated with the rest of the portal. So, for example, I can access here and, and I've got a details link here that allows me to go directly into the marketplace and see the uh, entry, the detail page about your portal here. I have uh, access to, you know, 
this portlet, of course, I want to give you portal five stars. Uh, I can, uh, if I'm permitted to by the administrator, I have the option to remove uh, this portlet or move it around. Uh, I've already added this portlet to my favorites, so I'm going to find another one that I haven't. Yeah, here we go. Add to my favorites. You have added Canvas as a favorite. That's terrific. I think I have the favorites portlet on the on this demo tab. Yeah, I do. It's over here. So uh, you can see right here all the all the portlets that I've favorited. I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the left hand column. At, at any rate, that's uh, essentially the you know the main focus of this demo. We really wanted to take some some of the newer um, the newer features of uPortal 4.1 and the content strategies and build out a, a, you know sort of a brand new portal experience that really emphasizes those things. Uh, and so uh, you know that's what this demo is, and I wanted to show you that as well. So I am. Definitely going to stop sharing here, and I think this is the point at which I hand control back over to Jim. I think he's going to take us out with the future future stuff. Thanks, Drew. So just a little bit more. You kind of seen, um, especially with that uh, U launch concept that uh, Drew was just demoing. That's um, you know some of our future direction, but um, over the last few years, we've seen some great progress in making uPortal work well on any device, but we're not stopping yet, and we have plans on making this experience even more responsive and perform uh, even better on not only mobile devices, but really basically any device. So in addition to improving the um, portal responsiveness and performance, we're also looking at making improvements to individual portlets and optimizing their responsiveness and their performance. And, uh, you know, we're looking at ways to reduce the number of page loads that we have to go through in order to uh, deliver this content, trying to get more of it um, immediately out there for you. You know, and we're, we're also seeing this emerging transformation of the kind of the new paradigm that goes beyond the traditional tabular portal experience that uh, Drew has um, you know, demonstrated one aspect of that. So as many institutions, as they've experienced significant growth in the amount of uh, digital content available online, and you know, much of this is accessible within the portal, it has become a bit challenging for users to actually find the content just because there's so much great content out there. So as you can see, to help address this, we're looking at a number of tech techniques, you know, making the, um, you know, marketplace uh, a way that you can highlight the content and making things more searchable so that you can, uh, you know, start to search for content, but make it really easy for that content to come up uh, quickly for you. We're looking at the enhancing that ability to quickly access and launch that content once you find it. And then finally, you know, making this exposed to search engines so that now users can search and find the content using the traditional search methods that they already have, maybe a, a campus search appliance or just straight, straight out uh, um, one of the commercial search engines. We're also doing under the hood development uh, expanding the APIs that will take the information that's within the portal and make it available beyond the portal. So this includes developing new REST endpoints as well as documenting the existing ones. So this is going to make it easier for to develop innovative web applications and to, to develop native mobile applications, both the uh, U-Mobile ones or integrating the portal content into some custom mobile app that you've developed for your camp campus. So this also, this technique of uh, developing more APIs to get the data out, it promises to make it easier for non-Java developers to participate in portal-related development. 
I think we'll see some more examples of that uh, emerging within the community. And finally, we're looking at making improved, uh, uh, doing security improvements as well. First and foremost of these is really the uh, continued adoption of spring security throughout the portal framework. We're looking at adding new uh, additional security checks at multiple places within the data flow to uh, you know, continue to make our product even um, more secure. And it, as we do this, we're retiring the custom code that we have uh, have developed um, in ages past and going with more of a, the standard or modern uh, security practices. So that's it for our formal presentation. And again, if you want to find out more about uPortal, uh, check out the project website. That'll link you off to the wiki as well. Join the community discussion list. Uh, contact one of our solution providers if you have some uh, specific detailed questions or want uh, some type of an assessment. And also, um, don't forget about our conferences or the uh, camps where you can get some face-to-face -face time to find out more about uh, not only uPortal, but the other Aperio projects as well. So we do have uh, just a few moments. Drew, did you want to um, speak to some of these uh, questions over the air in addition to um, noting anything in the in the chat? I will make a note that um, we are hoping that this uh, presentation, um, the recording, uh, will be available and we'll make note of that on the uh, uPortal web project website. Hey, Jim, thanks. Uh, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. I I noticed a, a lot of uh, questions were coming through when I got done speaking, So, and I know we don't have a whole lot of time, or at least not within the hour, so I started typing responses. Um, Matilda, I... Uh, as far as responsive portlets go, one thing that we've started doing uh, with responsiveness in portlets is uh, reacting to the fact that we are in maximized mode. Uh, as a portlet developer, if if we realize, um, if we can identify through the portlet API that we're in maximized mode, then we feel we can rely more on media queries that tell us the size of the display display. Uh, as far as when we're in dashboard uh, mode, that's a little tougher because it's very difficult to know, uh, you know, as, as you're well aware, as we've talked uh, on the list before, it's very difficult to know the size of the column that you're in and how much screen real estate. Seeking really good answers, uh, I think what we do here at Unicon more than anything is try to make it small <laughs> in in dashboard try to um, you know try to put together content that would look decent in a three or four column view in a in a desktop uh, as well as in a single column on a smartphone uh, and I know that's not extremely concrete uh, but it is uh, at least something that I can articulate. Uh, let me get caught up here. Uh, I'll just uh, maybe respond to Paul's question. Um, I think was it Paul had a question about ERP uh, integration. There are some portlets that are in that are available that we've used to integrate to different ERP systems. And uh, part of those develop, require you to develop a, um, a custom integration point to the particular ERP system uh, that you have. But I know that um, some of our uh, student-related portlets or our HR-related uh, portlets are designed so that you can plug in different systems. And this is Drew again. Uh, Neil, uh, 
with regard to the portlets on ULaunch, uh, ULaunch is a, a full U portal. You can put uh, any of the same portlets in there. As a matter of fact, uh, most of the same portlets are in the ULaunch demo. Uh, when I clicked over to the to the other tab, I actually had a, a calendar portlet. I think it was on there. So you can mix and match the the app launcher portlets together with any other any other portlets that work in uPortal, that's just fine. As far as what the app launcher portlets can be, uh, in our demo, we just, you know, launched over to sort of home pages or marketing pages for the, you know, for the organizations or products that we were showcasing. Uh, but we imagine that on a campus, those links would take you, you know, because you have some sort of single sign-on solution implemented would take you directly into those applications already authenticated, you know, as the same user that you are in the portal. Uh, and we can work with uh, you. Those app launcher portlets also support URL parameters, so there are ways to uh, pass some important information in the URL, uh, contextuals like user attribute information along the URL as you go. It, it, I think, um, you know, one of the things that we're doing at uh, UW Madison is, I think, something similar to the you launch experience, but um, the particular things that you would be you know, seeing that you could launch or access that could be even uh, portless within the portal. So it's really, it could go out to something externally like the app launcher uh, uh, enables, but we can also do internal things. So really you can mix it up with any uh, anything. Uh, I think Paul also had a question about what uh, platforms um, does uPortal run on? I think the vast majority of the installations are run on uh, Linux or Solaris, but we do have, um, you know, I believe it's been installed on Windows as well. And I think there's probably a variety of, um, you know, server, uh, you know, numbers or sizes. Um, as well, it really depends on the uh, how much load you're looking at. I know we at Madison have a cluster of four Solaris uh, servers, but um, you know we've got more power than we actually need. I think we are out of time. Um, and maybe we'll continue to uh, leave the presentation up and try to get to some of these uh, chat, um, uh, get some a few more responses here in chat. But I do appreciate everyone coming today and uh, look uh, to the UPortal website for uh, an archive of this. And uh, also look forward to other presentations and webinars coming up in this series for the other Aperio projects. And the next of those is the same time on the 12th of November when there'll be a webinar about Student Success Plan, a new and exciting project. Hope you can make it. Pass it on to somebody in your institution if you, if you think that they'll be interested in, uh, in analytics for student retention. Uh, thanks a lot for attending. We'll make sure that this stuff gets posted online. Keep your questions going into the uPortal lists. There's a, a link there to all the uPortal community and developer lists. Thanks a lot, and see you soon, I hope.